Here's the third one. You got to pick up what you feel. We all throw off emotional signals. You got to learn to pick those up, picking up those emotional signals so you don't go tromping on with heavy, wordy boots, right? When you should have backed off, this is not the time. And that wasn't necessarily from what you saw or what you heard, but it's got to be from what you feel, what strikes you from these emotional signals. So develop that ability, if you can, to pick up those emotional signals so you don't blow off the top, right, when it isn't time, and you don't use caustic language when it is not called for. Part of it's what you see, part of it's what you hear, but a big part of it's how you feel. Now here's the fourth part. Number four is intensity. Emotional intensity. Here's now is what makes language powerful. I can put it in one easy sentence. What's powerful is words loaded with emotion. That's what's powerful. Words are words, yes, and words are powerful too, but not near the power of words loaded with human emotion. The full range of human emotion. Intent, hate, love, anger, contempt, caring, compassion, all that stuff, the full range of the spectrum of human emotion that's available that all of us have got. I'm telling you, that's what makes language powerful to accomplish the task, turn on the lights, move somebody to action, correct a problem, find a solution, words loaded with emotion. Now, the full range of emotion. In fact, it gets a little complicated. Sometimes you got to put love and hate in the same sentence and not only feel it, but say it. How often don't you have to say to your children, I love you, but I hate what's going on. Boy, it's important for kids to know what you love and what you hate. Sometimes it's useful to put it in the same sentence. I love you, but I hate where you're going. I love you, but I hate who you're around. I hate what's happening. That's so important. That's always a dilemma, trying to explain both our love and our hate. But you got to learn to do it. You got to try it. You got to express it, not let it go. Now, here's what's important about intensity that changes the power of the word. See, a word might be like a little straight pin, a little straight pin. You know, a guy buys a shirt. It's got all these little pins in it. You know, you got to take out these little pins. And if I had one of those little straight pins and I threw it at you and hit you in the face or the hand, you'd feel it. That means I got you with my words. But what if I took that little straight pin and wired it to the end of an iron bar? See, I could drive that pin through your heart. The iron bar, the pin is the word, but the iron bar is the emotions. Words backed up with emotions are what's powerful. And the emotion changes the effectiveness of the word. Now, here's the next key on intensity and emotions. The emotions must be well measured. That's what makes a good play. That's what makes a good performance in a movie. Well-balanced emotions, not too much for a small point. That would look silly. Parents, we all have to be taught this. You don't need an atomic explosion for a small point. Kids sometimes have a valid argument. Making it too big, too big a deal. Small deal, making it a big deal. See, emotion usually does that. Blows a little deal into a big deal. We've all got to learn not to make a big deal out of a little deal. So you don't need an atomic explosion for a small point. In leadership we teach, don't shoot a cannon at a rabbit. It's too much firepower. It's effective, but you've got no more rabbit. So one of my speaker friends said to me, you should have been there the other day, Jim. I blew them all away. I said, oh, no, where are they now? You, you blew them all away? Come on, we don't need to blow them all away. Just enough firepower to be effective. Now, here's the other part. Not too little. If it's a major point and you don't have much emotion, I'm telling now it loses its effectiveness. You don't look that good. Measured emotions. Plenty for the point. Not too much for the point. 
This is all skills we can all learn and we can all develop how much firepower to put to the language. But here's what's effective. Well-chosen words mixed with measured emotions. That's the key. Well-chosen words selected, available in your bank of resources, mental resources, and then enough emotion from your heart and soul mixed together to make the conversation effective to make it work. Now, where does intensity come from? Here's where it comes from. The blend of all of our experiences, where you've been and what you've seen and what you've heard and how you felt, what went on and what you went through and what you got out of, what you got into, successes and failures, that whole blend of emotional experiences, personal experiences, that is now your emotional content. Here's the key. Have it available near the surface for the presentation for the play this emotional stuff has got to be near 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 the surface not too deep not too far away but near available ready to be mixed with the language to make it highly effective